Yes, thank you very much and hi to you all. So I'm doing the presentation with my colleague Sebastian Hafner and we will continue with urban mining and circular economy. So um, we will include the circular construction and building to the vision of the climate resilient and nature inclusive green city. So urban mining regards the city as a source of uh, raw materials. So this means that the resources that are already built in the city or are available are kept in the cycle. The circular construction economy makes use of this approach and has the goal that all materials obtained in the process are returned to their technical or biotic cycles. So this re represents um, quite a paradigm shift in the construction industry, very much in the spirit of the circular economy, uh, because it means that we are moving away from the uh, linear reuse, uh, the linear use of resources and raw materials to a circular reuse and understanding of natural resources and the built environment. The circular construction economy includes the recovery oriented deconstruction as well as the local um, reprocessing of excavated materials and the reuse of recovered building materials, as well as the production of new building materials. So what this means for the deconstruction and the new building and soil construction um, phases we will discuss in the following few minutes. It is very essential to a sustainable circular construction economy to preserve the local resources. So, if the construction is kept local and the transport distances are very short, the ecological and economic outcome is way better. So additional to the ecological and economic benefits, the circular construction economy also includes the third pillar of sustainability, the social pillar. Yeah, thanks, Pia. I will continue. I hope you can hear me. Um... Where does a circle start in construction? It starts with the recovery oriented demolition uh, of a facility, respectively the returning of the building into its shell state. This is required by uh, law and makes uh, dismantling work necessary. Uh, in this process, also materials get, connect, uh, get collected. For example, non-ferrous uh, materials, metals like aluminium or copper, um, which tend to have a high value density, um, or other objects uh, who are suitable uh, for reuse. And the collection and the separation of the non-ferrous materials, the non-ferrous metals, uh, the reuse of components are all works that uh, normally doesn't happen in standard demolition. So they create an added value by um, generating revenue and saving disposal costs. So for that, for this, the, the dismantling work can be financed. And this is why the recovery oriented uh, demolition um, carries itself, so to say. So this is this business case uh, we call uh, social urban mining, and for this purposes uh, we uh, found uh, we founded Baucarousel in Vienna. Baucarousel is uh, a cooperation network of socio-economic businesses for the recovery-oriented demolition uh, who apply this um, social urban mining business case. So, but why is urban mining social? How can urban mining be social? Um, it's simple as that demolition works, uh, dismantling the collection and separation of materials is often connected with small scale manual work, which is uh, highly useful for the environment. So at the same time, this also opens up um, opportunities for the labor market because it creates a low threshold access to um, employment and people with disadvantages on the labor market, um, they get employed, trained and qualified for the in the dismantling sector in the field of deconstruction and in the building sector. Yeah, uh, next slide, please. Yeah. Um, in so social urban mining, uh, it, uh, it's about the work 
it's about to work in the building stock. But how can we make design and planning circular? While thinking about this question, we came uh, across this graphic. And uh, what do we see here? Um, simplified, we see um, the larger circle. It's the input circle. It's the resources input for Austria. And contrasted with a smaller um, circle, it's the output um, of resources, which is which means waste. So what does this graphic say? Even if we would be able to recycle 100% of our waste, we would be still far away from meeting the demand, uh, meeting our resource needs. And the continuously growing demand for raw materials, for building, uh, for buildings and infrastructure, the continuously growing stock is not compatible with the natural boundaries of our planet. So what can we do? Of course, we have to close material loops as good as we can. Therefore, we need to focus on um, circular, we have to use circular materials, recyclable materials who are demandable and um, who are harmless of health. But that is not enough. We need to do more than that. And this is why um, the term durability is from such a high importance for us. Because um, usage requirements for building an infrastructure um, change constantly. And we need to find a way, uh, we need to design and dimension buildings in a way that we can, um, the, the, the basic structures, the basic building structures can be easily expanded and they don't have to be refurbished or renewed every time uh, the usage requirements change. So the aim is to build in a redundancy where we can allow basic structures to be permanently um, ex permanently preserved and extended. But on the other hand, we allow uh, individual elements like windows or facades to be um, flexible. Uh, flexible designs in order to enable in, to, in order to enable a kind of openness for usage because every um, generation, of course, has the right to its own design. And we brought an example with us of uh, this um, basic structures who um, got uh, very, um, who got um, renewed, uh, who, who got preserved and um, expanded carefully. You see the basic structure, it's the glass structure and uh, on top uh, the wood construction. It's a project. Sebastian, by excuse me to interrupt yes. you so bluntly. Uh, we have three more minutes to go. Yeah, um, I finished. Uh, so that's the uh, the third um, example of um, of circular design. It's the usage of renewable resources like wood or clay or um, innovations like reduced carbon concrete. Then I will continue with the uh, third concept, so to say. It's the circular soil concept. Um, the, the initial basic concept is not new. So as early as 1915, Otto Wagner already envisioned reusing the soil for construction sites um, directly. But so uh, although the idea is quite simple, um, the implementation is not yet state of the art, so to say. And in the spirit of the circular economy, we um, or the, the aim of the circular soil concept is to reuse as much um, soil and excavated materials as possible. So we also include um, sand and gravel and not only um, topsoil in, in the concept. This means that instead of transporting the excavated material away from the construction sites in a rather emission intensive way, we, or in the worst case, just transport them to the landfill, um, we reuse the soil and gravel and sand on site. So this can happen um, uh, depending on the quality of the excavated materials, um, for, for example, the sand can be um, used or, or further developed um, for the production of concrete, um, also on, on site with uh, mobile in situ concrete equipment. 
um, and the soil um, can be used for plant substrates. So if the quality is good enough and um, uh, with uh, suitable soil additives and a little bit of magic, no, just kidding, a little bit of uh, modeling and logistics, um, we can make plant substrates that can also be used directly on site. And we can also use um, recycled materials. For example, here, um, the brick chippings. Um, yeah, exactly. And we're currently working on a blueprint for the plant substrate uh, production. Um, so stay tuned. And we hope to um, uh, develop it further and simplify it to be able to build flowering turfs and green roofs and or fill planters with the substrates instead of buying expensive plant substrates um, for, the, for the building projects. And it is important to mention that the circular soil concept doesn't only work for one construction site, but uh, across multiple sites, depending on how much excavated materials are actually available and um, depending on the quality. So in the future, we will work on implementing the concept at the urban planning level. Uh, which has already happened in, in Vienna with a few projects, um, for example, Wildgarten, um, Eurogate, or also the Bayerup City Wienerberg. And this um, last goal leads to our vision. So the circular building or circular construction um, includes urban mining, recovery-oriented deconstruction, and circular soil. And it should be an integral part of the climate resilient and nature inclusive green city. So instead of burdening the people and the environment with gray infrastructures, um, soil sealing and uh, excessive linear resource con consumption and so on, um, we hope um, to include um, this, this vision we have um, for the circular building and design in the future. So yeah, so that um, the city of the future um, can provide all the ecosystem services that we intend with green infrastructures and we hope that um, further on we can present many more um, practical examples. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Pia, and uh, thank you very much, uh, Sebastian, uh, for this uh, inspiring presentation and beautiful diagrams and the lookout that we will hear more about the research going on. And uh, uh, I share, and I think we all share your your, your final comment uh, that we would uh, want uh, a city to deliver all these ecosystem services that we, we need. So we are curious to, to keep track on your research and uh, thank you very much. Uh, you. There's a, one little question in the chat, maybe you can answer that via the chat so that we move on with our next speaker. So thank you very much.